Are you looking for the best telescope for viewing planets and galaxies? Well, if so, then you've come to the right place because today I'm gonna to be walking you through the top three recommendations, having researched the market extensively for my own very first telescope. Now do bear in mind that the suggestions I make here today are suitable for beginners and also more experienced astronomers who may have or you know you may have had a telescope before and are looking to upgrade and I've also written this review as a blog post so there will be a link in the description if you wanted to consume this in text format maybe it's easier for you to digest so just bear that in mind and check that out if you wanted to see that. Now before we begin I'm just going to bring out a few different factors um, of what to look for in a telescope and this has kind of gone into some of the reasons behind my decisions here today and what made me go ahead and buy my own telescope. So these are the four or five things that I would focus my attention on. It can get very confusing with astronomy jargon and particularly when it comes to the equipment. So firstly, look at the focal length. Now, basically this is the distance from the center of the telescope lens and the point where the light comes together in focus. Or in other words, imagine that the focal length dictates the strength of the telescope. So how much can you see and how far can you magnify? So basically, the higher the focal length of the telescope, the larger objects in the sky will appear to you. You don't just want to take that alone, the focal length, because it kind of goes in with a focal ratio. Because what you essentially need is to see those objects in great detail and quality. So the focal ratio is what's going to dictate that for you. The other thing to consider is the aperture. And this is essentially the diameter of the telescope. So larger aperture telescopes are bigger telescopes. Now it's essential, the aperture is essential for how much you're ultimately gonna be able to see. And it's often given in millimeters or inches. So it's a measurement um, that you should kind of uh, look for. And in a nutshell, the higher your telescope's aperture, the clearer you're gonna see objects as well. So, you know, focal length, focal ratio and aperture all go hand in hand and they all are, specifications you are going to need to consider. Now when it comes to quality, of course, that's the quality of the telescope itself, the materials it's made by, and also the quality of the components as well. And lastly, price. Now you've probably got a budget in mind and you want to consider that budget in accordance to the quality. And you want to kind of consider things like, are you investing for the long term? You know, do you want your telescope to last you five to 10 years? Or are you looking for a budget friendly option that's not going to, you know, you don't mind needing to, you might need to replace it in a couple of years and you don't mind doing that. So just bear that in mind as well. So now with that said, on to the three options. I'll start with the third choice and I'll move through to the first. So in number three is the Celestrion Nexstar 130 SLT and it's a computerized telescope. Now on the left hand side you can see the specification, uh, the main specification to be aware of, but I'm just going to talk you through the pros and cons. Firstly it's fully computerized so you know you can set this up and it can track objects for you if you enter in the coordinates into the into the pad you can see that in the picture on the left hand side. Now that hand control has a 4,000 objects in its database and it's over 600 galaxies, 300 star clusters and several binary stars as well so once you put the coordinates in and you can get those online then it will automatically track to those. Um, the Skyline technology does this for you essentially, that's what Celestron have called it. Um, the telescope is also very compact and portable, making it easy for use on the go. Um, and the Sky Tour functionality, which is built in, enables you to see the best objects depending on your time and location. So that's a really, really cool feature, um, particularly if you're new to astronomy. Now the cons is that it does take some time to get used to the Skyline functionality. Um, and you can't also store that location data. So you need to basically, every time you use it, you will need to put in you know, your new, new coordinates or your new details to get um, those recommendations. In at number two, we have the Orion Starblast 6i in telescope, and this is a reflector telescope. Um, and again, you can see on the left-hand side, the specifications. Um, you know, these are the, the key, key things you're gonna want to compare and consider. Uh, as I say in the description, a link over to my site, you can compare these side by side. So that's really, really useful if you want to do that. But again, this is, this is a six inch aperture telescope. So you will get improved light gathering ability. And so you'll be able to see detailed views of the moon, um, various planets, and also deep sky objects. Um, it's a very user friendly telescope uh, and it's a simple point and view version. So essentially, you know, you can just identify and find objects in the sky 
depending on what you want to see. Um, it's a compact tabletop design and it only weighs uh, 23 pounds. So, you know, it's excellent for moving around the house if you want to, you know, change window or you did want to take it with you on the go. You will need a base to do that. Um, but, you know, it is, it is useful for, for taking around um, with you. Um, you get two uh, serious plus eyepieces, one um, at 25 millimeter and the other at 10 millimeter. Um, and so basically that gives you greater visibility or, you know, depending on what you want to see, you can change those um, depend on depending on what you want to see. Um, and there is also Starry Night software, which teaches you how to use this telescope and get the best views possible. Now, the particular cons of the Star Blast are that um, a two millimeter hex Allen key is required to rotate and tilt the secondary mirror and it's not included when you buy it. So that's something you probably will need to buy separately. So that comes obviously at additional cost. And secondly, careful and constant collimation is necessary if you want sharp images. So that maybe you need to contact Orion and the manufacturer if you have issues with that. It's just something that some users have reported. So number one, what is the recommendation? What telescope should you be getting? I recommend the Celestron Nexstar 6SE. Now, if you look on the left-hand side there, I'm not sure if you've been looking or comparing the specifications, but this has the highest focal length of the three telescopes referenced here today. It also has a six inch aperture, which is great for your particular use case. It has 300 times magnification and it weighs about 30 pounds. So the benefits of this are that, of this particular telescope and why I recommend it is it has a completely automated go-to mount and the data space has over 40,000 objects. And, you know, you can automatically locate and track those objects, you know, 40,000 different things to see. It's fantastic for, for beginners. Um, again, as a Celestron product, it's got the Skyline technology, which I discussed earlier. Um, this particular telescope is designed with a single arm fork and a sturdy steel tripod. So if you do take it with you on the go, uh, you can set up that tripod and it's quite resistant against strong winds and it's just kind of quite solid um, and it's pretty safe depending on where you put it. Um, the telescope can actually be assembled into separate components. So again, making it easy, easily transportable and also easy to set up. And a lot of users um, suggest that it takes between two and five minutes once you know what you're doing. Obviously it might take a little bit longer at first. Um, you get some optical coatings and a star diagonal included. And you also get a finder scope as well, which just gives you, you know, better visibility into the sky, depending on what you want to see. The only downside really is perhaps cost. Um, it is on the more expensive side. Um, it's not too bad when you compare it to other telescopes. And if you click, if you click on the link in the description, it will head over to Amazon and you can see the, the current and latest best price. Amazon is the place to buy Celestron products. You can't get it through their website directly. Um, so do consider that. Um, but the other main con is that it does have quite a high energy supply and you go through quite a few batteries uh, and they are double A um, and you need eight, eight of those. Um, you can get some battery power. Um, op you can operate this telescope with a kind of telescope battery, um, but that obviously comes at additional cost and uh, you need to make sure you get the right one and, and of, of all the other factors to consider there like charging. So final verdict, I recommend the Celestra Nexstar 6SE. Here you can see how the spec compares against the other telescopes. But again, if you head into my review in the description below to my site, astronomyscope.com, you can explore this in further detail. But don't just take my word for it. You know, a lot of astronomers recommend the 6SE. Um, it, it combines performance with budget. You know, if you've got a bigger budget, you could even stretch to the 8SE. Um, but I would recommend the 6SE if you, you know, for, for financial reasons. It's, it's enough for what you need. And uh, yeah, you can keep your kind of cost down. But if you head over to Amazon, there's a link in the description below. Um, to head into each of the product pages on Amazon. If you, if you get over there, then you'll so, soon see why these telescopes are recommended. Um, they've got great reviews and they are used by many astronomers with great success. So with that said, I wish you all the best with astronomy, the telescope that you ultimately decide to get, and I hope you have an excellent day.